who said that the size doesn't matter. So I recently reached $800 from my indie applications and I wanted to share some things I learned along the way that scaled my app's revenue. If you're new here, I am Daniel and I'm building iOS applications with the hope that they will generate enough revenue to support my living. So I will walk you through the process of how I validate an application idea with the tools that I'm using, onboarding flows and the payroll strategies that I'm using in all of my apps. So let's start with the tools that I'm using and how I validate my application ideas. After finding an application idea, I want to know if that application is making money. And this is how we validate an application basically. If that application makes money, we have some opportunities here. Because always is there a place for you so let's move on to sensor tower for that and let's say that we want to build a workout tracker and we have these three applications that are appearing here and as you can see the first one is a gym workout tracker which has 20k per month um, this one has 500k and this one 50k per month so it's a valid business idea or application idea, however you want to name it. You can also see things here if you click on this one. We don't see all the things because I don't have a premium account here, but I'm seeing the most important thing that it makes 500k per month. And it also has 200k downloads the last month. You can also see their subscriptions plans here, their um, app store screenshots, the languages and so on but we only care about this thing. After you validate your application idea, the next part is to do some ASO. ASO stands for App Store Optimization. Basically, we need to find keywords that are popular enough to people search for them and not too difficult to rank in the top applications. For ASO, I'm using Astro and it's not sponsored by them, but I have a discount code for you, which gives you 20% off and you will find it in the description of this video. I like to use Astro because it's very easy to use and I used it in all of my applications and this helped me reach the 800 bucks. It will also help me generate much more money because if you don't have an ASO tool, it will be harder for you to know which keywords are very hard to rank in. You will end up with very few users because your application will be very hard to find. For example, you try to rank in a keyword that has a difficulty of 90, let's say. And your application, as it's not popular, it doesn't have any reviews, it's brand new, it won't even appear in the top 200 searches. and it will result in few users and maybe no sales or uh, just a few sales. Okay, so I added my workout tracker application here in Astro. So to add an application, you simply need to click on this, type the application name and it will appear. You need to also click on this uh, plus icon and it will appear here. Now let's collapse this and we can also add the keywords that we are targeting here in the app store from the app store or you can search for random keywords here but this one the font 27 suggestions will give you the keywords in which you are ranking and let's say select top 100 and let's wait a couple of seconds until the uh, all the keywords are added so as you can see i'm ranking in top five for the free workout tracker keyword um place six seven and so on let's delete all of these ones and let's say that i simply want to see which rank i'm for the workout tracker so workout tracker wait a couple of seconds okay i'm ranking 21 for this workout tracker workout log and the suggestions doesn't um, show all the keywords that you are ranking is trying to fetch some keywords that you are ranking for but better is to search them by yourself so let's say workout log i'm in place 207 so for this keyword i don't stand the chance to find some users another nice thing about astro is that you can see this graph of how your application is scaling as my application is brand new and this chart isn't even appearing here but day after day astro is updating its keywords so tomorrow i can see here on a place change for example i can go up with to a couple of positions or go down but this will also let me know how my application is doing 
also when I'm doing keyword research, I'm also looking at the competitor keywords. So if I want to see this application keywords, I click on this I. Now I want to filter these keywords because as you can see, there are 5,000 keywords and I'm not looking through every keyword here. The best practice to target keywords is to have a popularity over 20 and making sure that it's enough popular. It means that people is searching for this keyword in the app store and the difficulty not too hard to rank in and you should aim for 60. And here you can look through all of these keywords and you can add them to your application to see how your application is doing for these keywords. For example, I can select the top 100 keywords and add them here and I can see, but you can also select a couple um, keywords and add the selected. And as you can see, my application ranks for only for this keyword and for those three isn't even appearing in the top 200 searches. Anyways, as I said, if you want to use Astro to do your keyword research, I have that discount code in the description and moving on to the design. So when it comes to designing an application, I like to look at other design, especially for the big applications in that uh, area. Because if their application is already making money because the application idea is valid and it means that their design is good. I like to research my competitors using Nobin because it's really easy to use because I can exactly search for what I'm looking for. If you want to see a paywall, you can simply enter here. You say paywall and you say you have this category subscription and paywall, for example. And I can see what paywalls other applications are using. I can see the stoic application paywall and I can also copy um, and paste it in Figma directly. And so in my last application, which is the workout tracker, I inspired from an application called Feedbot because their approach was very nice. If I can find the screen that I saw how they track the workout, if you give me a couple of seconds. Okay, so I found it and this is the screen. As you can see, they have this thing that means the set. You have the reps here and the, uh, the weight. And in my workout tracker, I did a similar thing because I inspired from them and this helped me a lot to know how to design this because before that it looked very ugly. I found this tool valuable and if you want to use it, I also have a discount coupon for you here. And if you want to use it, you have the link in the description. Who said that the size doesn't matter? I mean, the longer means the better, right? But I don't know of what you're thinking of, but I'm talking about onboarding flows, guys. Imagine that you simply open up an application and you're directly prompted with a paywall and you need to pay to use the application, but you don't know what the application offers back to you. Or you have a simple introduction screen in which you say something about your application, like some features and in a carousel, for example, and then the next screen, paywall. You didn't solve nothing. Thing is that the onboarding is like your sales pitch, but the user isn't aware of that. You walk him through the application's feature, you also ask him questions, and you are making him think that your application is the solution to their needs. For example, my dog identifier application has one main purpose, to identify dogs, of course. But I'm doing my best to let the user know that this application has a fast and precise breed identification. I'm also asking him a question to increase the interaction because if he goes through the onboarding flow without reading the application features or even interacting with the application and he gets to the paywall, he will not care and will uninstall your application. So the best practice is to ask him questions and he will interact with the application to respond to them. For example, you ask him why you can't accomplish your goal and you enumerate some things. Even if your application is small, like the dog identifier application I said earlier, try to have at least three screens in the onboarding and then you can show up the paywall. Or if you can do a longer onboarding, if the purpose of your application is way complex than a simple identifier application, do that. Even if it takes you 15 screens, for example, it's good. Trust me. 
After the user saw your sales pitch, you will need to prompt him with the offer and I mean with the paywall. Pricing model I'm using right now and I'm talking in US dollars is $4.99 per week and uh, $24.99 per year. It also depends on the application if I offer a free trial or not. Because if the application has a high API usage for the OpenAI or whatever you, AI you are using, it will not be worth to offer, for example, a seven day trial for someone and they use a lot of your application, you make high consumption on the API key and they cancel the trial. So a few days ago, I noticed that Adam Lytle, another indie iOS developer that motivated me to go through this path, adopted a new monetization strategy for his applications. He offers a three day free trial for his weekly plan, which is $4.99 in US dollars and a lifetime plan instead of a subscription with $24.99. This monetization strategy doesn't sound bad at all because the majority of users are using your application a few times and they will forget about it. And I also tested this myself and I made a workout logger or tracker however you want to name it which is called Vigor and I will leave it in the description if you're interested to track your workouts. I adopted this monetization strategy and in the first day of the launch it made to lifetime plans and it means 50 bucks it also generated four to five free trials i hope they will convert and we'll see anyways let's also talk how the paywall looks i'm using adam lytle's paywall and it's open source by the way and you can find it on github i will leave a link in the description for this one too so the first thing is to have an appealing title so the user knows what he gets for example, in my tanning application, I'm saying that get a healthier tan two times faster. And this will make the user think, oh, this application really helps me. And he will go down and he will see the features enumerated down there. You will have to enumerate three to four features of your application and then we have the monetization strategy that we talked earlier. So these are the things that made my application's revenue grow and I'm curious if you have some any other tips that you can share in the comments. So that was it with this video and if you enjoyed it make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and see you in the next video. Bye bye.